Republic in Africa and yet we're one of the least developed countries on the continent and indeed one of the least developed countries in the world and I say to you my fellow Liberians we deserve a better Liberia we need to ask ourselves some fundamental questions why are we where we are most Liberian homes don't have electricity most Liberian homes don't have running water most librarians are unemployed. These are things we can change. These are things we should demand of ourselves and of our leaders. We as librarians cannot keep doing the same things and expect different results. We cannot keep electing and selecting the same kinds of leaders with the same kinds of experiences and expect Liberia to change. We have to do many things differently. And that starts with selecting and electing new leaders who know how to create jobs, who know how to grow the economy, who will prioritize the librarian people first before they prioritize themselves. And this is what I offer you, the librarian people. The other universal truth that I want to share with you, my fellow Liberians, is the best predictor of future performance and future behavior is past performance and past behavior. And again, I ask you to look at my record of job creation, of success, of managing large budgets without one penny going missing. All of these things you can look at and compare to the other candidates. And again, you will see that my past performance and past behavior is a good predictor, a good indicator that what I commit to, we will deliver. There are five priorities we have, and we call that the what's. And then there are five things we call the how we'll do it. And those priorities are as follows. Our first priority is infrastructure. Simply put, is electricity, it's roads, it's water, and it's internet and cell phone connectivity across Liberia. We have to, have to invest in infrastructure. That is the top priority. That's the basis on which we can and will do everything else. The second priority for us is job creation. There are too many unemployed, underemployed, and unemployable Liberians. The unemployment rate is over 85%. And therefore, job creation is our next priority, creating jobs for the Liberian people. The next priority is agriculture. We are a country that do not fear ourselves. These are things we can do for ourselves. We should be producing rice to feed ourselves. And my commitment is that by the end of my first term in office, we will be self-sufficient in rice production. And within education, we are focused on vocational training, teachers training, and adult education. But we have to educate our young people because again, that's how we can help them create jobs. That's how we can train farmers. 
And so these things are all linked together. And our final priority in terms of the what is health. Because you can have good infrastructure, you can have a good job, you can feed yourself, you can have great education, but if you don't have your health, it doesn't matter. And so health is our fifth priority, and there we're focused on primary health care and preventive health care. So those are the what's we'll do for our people, for the Liberian people. How are we going to do these things? The first how is we want to engage Liberians differently in the transformation of our country. We call this hearts and minds. How do we get all Liberians to participate in the changes that are required? We're going to use arts and music and culture and reconciliation and religion. All of these things, we will be deliberate in using these things to engage us as a people in this transformation process. And so we're doing some work on how we can make those things happen. The next how is that we're going to find the money. We have to find the resources, the money to do all of the what's I mentioned earlier. And the way we'll find the money is first, we'll go after waste in government. You know, we spend a lot of money on things that we don't need or we pay too much for things that we do need. So for example, I believe the vehicles we buy for our government officials, we spend too much money on that. We should reduce the number of vehicles and we should buy less expensive vehicles for our government officials. We need to reduce how much they make so we can pay teachers and civil servants and police officers and the military officers and healthcare workers, people who actually do the work. We need to pay them more money and reduce the gap between those at the top and those who actually do the work. The other way we find the money is going after this thing called corruption. You know, corruption has been the bane of our country. It's, is the, the primary reason why we are as underdeveloped as we are today. And we will aggressively go after corruption. The first thing we'll do is, we will appoint a corruption czar, a minister in charge of corruption in the presidency that will coordinate all of the agencies that are meant to uh, find corrupt officials. Secondly thing we'll do is, we'll make sure we are giving the resources, the money, the right people, the Red Logistics, to the anti-corruption agencies, the LACC, Liberia Anti-Corruption Commission, the General Accounting uh, Office, the Public Procurement and Concessions uh, Commission. We will make sure they got the right resources to go after corrupt uh, officials. After that, when we find people who are corrupt, we will prosecute them, we will put them in jail, and we'll seize the assets. It will not be good enough for you just to resign. So those are the things we'll do to really go after uh, corruption. I have committed that I will not take a salary. The salary that is paid the president, I will allocate it towards helping to fight uh, corruption. That's how important I think it is to, to us. And then the other way we'll find the money is we'll make sure we're getting full value, the full money we, monies we're due from our natural resources. We'll look to exploit other natural resources so we can get the funds required to fund health care, to fund infrastructure, to create jobs, etc., etc. So finding the money is the second how. The next how is we want to create a government of inclusion. We want all sections of our country to be represented in the government. We want opposition political parties to be in government because I believe, we believe that having a government inclusion will help all of us make the right decisions. It will make sure that we're spreading the resources of our country across the entire country. And then the last two hows, one is growing the private sector. We will focus on growing the private sector so Liberians can primarily benefit from that growth. No longer should Liberian business people be spectators to our economy. And we want to actively support Liberianization and encourage and provide credit and other facilities to Liberian businesses so they can participate and last but not least, we will use technology. We'll leverage technology to help us achieve our goals. So those are the what's and the how's. But let me end by leaving you again with these two universal truths. One is we cannot keep doing the same things, my people, and expect different results. 
we cannot keep electing the same people with the same experiences and expect Liberia to change. We need to elect and select different people to lead us, to serve us, to help us manage and run our country. And the other universal truth is the best predictor of future performance and future behavior is past performance and past behavior. And on those two counts, I believe I stand head and shoulders above the other candidates expiring. Together, we will change Liberia for the benefit of all Liberians. We will transform our country. We will give us a new start, a fresh start, so that all of us can benefit from this country we love. I thank you. God bless you. God bless the Republic of Liberia. Chicken necro for day. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. I know it's early this morning for our side on this side. It's early. It's five what? Five fifty. And I know everybody's surprised, but what are you doing up by this time? Wow, my man, you're confusing us, man. No, I'm not confusing nobody. But I will be here for the exact one hour and hopefully by the grace of God on Friday I will be on a coming hour in Liberia and around six o'clock in the evening so we're doing everything possible to send a message this is clear you need to help everybody need to get involved when was the first time in our life as liberian to listen to a candidate to tell you what they're going to do from ellen johnson charles Taylor, all the way we have never one day, Ellie's a smart woman, but Ellie never actually explained her plans. We ourselves went on their website and said, I will do this and did this. And, you know, but this man telling us for the first time in our history, even people who disagree with Alexander Cummings, people who, who don't even like him, they still come and tell you, this guy is the best guy for the job. Because we have never seen it. They say you must discover a problem. If you want to solve a problem, you should know the problem you want to solve. This man know the problem of Liberia. This man traveling around the country, meeting people, taking notes. Which of our politicians have done it? Nobody. Why are we suffering our country? Why are we, why are we doing this to ourselves? Let that be honest. This man telling us, and it's simple. This is not no rocket scientist. For any nation in this stage to survive, I know some people think that I'm coming to go start cursing. No, 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 no. Some people want to hear bad news. No, 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 no. You will hear the truth. It's not bad news you're going to hear. You will hear the truth. The truth of the matter is that Alexander Cummings is the man. And he will win the election. We are the honor dogs. Don't worry. If you don't support him, fine. It is your right. It is your right. But we should call spade a spade and we know exactly what's going on. We put one of the best documents together, one of the best groups so far that's supposed to, 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 to lead this country to the next election. Put the best, best document, not the practice, because we, a lot of librarians never believe that it was going to hold or what. But they put one of the best documents together built on consensus. That means everybody must agree to damage it. But one party, I will not blame ALP in a sense. ALP did what it's supposed to do because ALP is nothing. Let me be frank with you guys. ALP don't even have a good membership. ALP have 24,000 in the entire country. So right now, if I tell you AMP, they don't even know their own uh, uh, members. So, but I'm disappointed in a party that went for 12 years, 12 years, that arrogance, that that entitlement, entitlement syndrome. 
They think that because they were there for 12 years, they could just come and say, yes, it is our time again to come back. UP, look, if you guys don't follow our politics after the election, UP was done. The CPP did more. They did UP a favor by even allowing them to be part of a collaboration because they were dead. No UP person will tell you. They will only tell you behind closed door. They were dead. So they were smart enough to come together to say, let's do this. But they're thinking that they were trying to use it as a yardstick, as a springboard, that when we get in there, we will bring all the lies. And they are still lying today. They believe that they can feed candidate in Lofa County. But you're watching and see. You guys watch and see. If any UP people person will listen to me today, don't, maybe you yourself don't know. You need to go and start reading. Whether you like it or not, you can talk about finger or not finger, or who finger who, who in finger document. That lies will not work. If you really want to get out, you better come back on your knees. Go back to the U and the CPP and say, listen, guys, please let amend this part of the thing so we can go. But if you think that you will play a hard ball, you'll be making a big mistake. The law is the law. No court, no court, the Supreme Court will not go against that company, that thing. Because everybody watching, where they say a citizen has the right to associate and disassociate, the Supreme Court will tell us if they're talking about human being or they're talking about corporation or an organization. Because if they say yes, they just open a Pandora box that everybody can just break a contract anytime. They say citizen. Citizen. That is what the Constitution tells me. But if you think that you want to combine yourself with an organization, the name Boaka do never sign a contract in CPP. Benna Yuri never signed a contract in CPP. Commies never sign a contract. The party sign a contract. So the party will be held responsible for anything, there's consequences. So leaving, LP know that when they, they complain, in their case, yes, they complain. It is their right to complain. And they left. They know exactly, they're not feeding nobody. ALP is not feeding nobody in. They don't have a candidate, so they don't care. But UP now, sat there, they used them. They got, they, they, they won that position. They want to be president. You see ALP, ALP not suffer for anything. ALP do not want, they're not feeding candidates, so they know. They, but for you to leave, they complain. Whether it's right or not, they complain. But UP, UP did not complain on anything. Liberty Party, who even just said they're leaving now, they, 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 they disgraced political leader, along with Darius Dillon and whosoever, they said they signed a memorandum of understanding. Memorandum of understanding is not a contract. So it was not a member run of understanding. So they left. But UP that got a, that have the eyes on the presidency allowed to be used. Allowed to be used. And Mr. Boaka, who everybody thinks that he because of age, he's supposed to be the smartest old man, fall in line. And poop, they left for no reason. But they're going around lying to the public to make themselves feel good. But let me say this. They are our act rivals. They think that they got the numbers. We don't have the numbers, so don't worry about us. We're on the track. We're running. We continue. The people that are ahead of us, they are afraid. The men are down fear, no fall. If you live in a glass house, do not throw stones. So they think that. We got two parties in Liberia because last 12 years it was UP and then CDC back. Since CDC messing up and then it goes right back. And listen, you from the CDC, we already know that your government is terrible. Your government is terrible. Your government have caused a lot of problems with with other countries, with the international community, stealing international community money. This is the first time that the international community, especially, 
a miracle to condemn our government. It never happened before. This is the first time up to present that our president had never been given invitation to go to America. So tell us, do you think we sit there and allow our friendship with America to mess up? Do you think the Americans, the American ambassador was wrong to tell us to call us out about corruption? Do you think the, the, the special assistant to Biden was wrong? Or statement from the American government? You know what I'm saying? So, President Weir, the ball is in your court. The campaign have not started yet because we will hold you responsible so you can you can you can pave the road you can put an artificial turf on the invisible park you can do whatsoever but that is not the problem that is not the real issue of liberia the real issue of liberia is our security we don't even have a light yes you want to play the blame game nobody care if you play the blame game you saw this woman with 15 kids. You decided to marry her. Then you want to complain? If this government, if our government was not going to get involved in corruption, if they're not going to get involved in corruption, stealing the country resources, enriching themselves, Nathaniel Maguire building the same type of compound that George we have built. He built, the building all the houses. Where they got money from? Even their salary. Liberians wake up. Even their salary, their salary cannot tell me, you can't tell you that Maggie's salary in four years can build him four houses. No way. He might build one house, the one that he's living in, but you cannot tell me that the minister of state, if he's making $15,000 a month, let, let put it this way, $15,000 a month, what making him be a millionaire by this time? Eh? What making him to be a millionaire? stealing our money stealing the country money and you got trying to justify and say oh yes the country the government doing good the government doing good government doing good way when people are suffering people are dying from child breath there is no good hospital i was schools with those that have money have to send their children to private schools eh? when you sick you can't go to hospital people die People leave from here, go, go to Liberia to visit, and they die because of common sickness. Nowhere to go. Lack of order. You walking, you looking, you checking your back. Oh, you must get CC camera. The government cannot even protect its citizens before I talk of foreigners. No ideas to create jobs. They put a PPP together. The proposed agenda. A very good agenda that if they were if they were to follow that agenda, maybe by this time we gone, we have in, uh, 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 and at least reduced the poverty uh, and thing. But what happened? They put money in the budget to steal. They put this one to steal. Everything is about George. We are George Manning. We are George Manning. We are. Everything is about George Manning. We are. They purchase one chair is George Manning. We are. They purchase a generator is George Manning. We are. They pay for rule is George Manning. We are. Everything. So you won't tell me the government now is George. We are. We are is the government. So then why we got all the ministers? Why we have all the different people who pay in there for nothing money? The chief procurement officer of the Republic of Liberia is George Manning. We are. Eh? Self glory, world by achievement. They have a party. Oh, the American ambassador dance. They say, oh, yeah, the ambassador on our side. You think the people stupid? You think they're stupid? We got a lot to call. Look, let the election start. Let this election start. We know we got P the UP and we got the CDC and we got the ALP. They all going against Mr. Cummings. We know that very well. But we will handle them at the appropriate time. But for UP, UP, they are the real instigator. They are the one who damage Liberia and think that they're entitled to it. And this old man sitting there and people pushing him around. Now you're enjoying the fun, eh? <laughs> you're enjoying the fun. The old man, senior advisor, senior advisor, he's a politician. He's not an advocate, he's a politician who plans to run for the Senate or run for president in 2029. Who a close associate to Mr. Boaka now working for the president. We all know he worked for the president. That is why they gave him the call. And 
is between them. They don't want worry today, not us. They worry. And you UP guys, you guys, you saw what happened now. Mr. Boaka put a team together for his bid for the presidency, headed by Taylor Yuri. Where are the UP members? Where is the chairman of UP? Where is the secretary general? They got Taylor Yuri heading the Boaka team. <laughs> Desperation. Fear. Fear. The old man. The old man thing he's sneaking. The old man thing he's sneaking. But let me tell you, the old man will never be president of Liberia. We know the whole thing. George Weah is pushing everything. And he, he succeeded. George Weah and the CDC group succeeded. I will give it to them. To go into enter the CPP and damage the CPP. One, if you can remember, Nathaniel Maggie was on spoon one night and said, listen, the CPP, we're not who you will see a lot of surprises. We got people in the CPP that are working for us. It was Ben Nayuri and Henry Costa. And today they brag about it. And also seditions. I don't know. I don't know about you. But you think you're so smart. You support George Weir. I know you're doing it out of your heart. Prince Sharif, Michael Gilman, eh, 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 Classy D, all the guys. They got their lives on the line. They're talking about George Weir. They're pressing George Weir. But George Weir never gave you a call. George Weir gave the man a call who cost him up good. The man who used all kinds of wars on him. You think it's a political... George Weir scored a political point on ANC. No. He scored a political point on UP. Not on us. Not on ANC. Because I can tell you any day, the people who are afraid of Mr. Costa are the old politicians because Costa know their dirty deeds. They and Costa have worked together. Costa have insulted Mr. Boaka. Costa have insulted George Weir. He have done a lot to them. So at the end of the day, they are the one worry, not us. We have already done with Costa. You know, sometimes people say, he said, you know, if I was supporting the ANC and they were going to be praising me, that's true. But I can tell you, for he supporting the ANC, he was going to be doing it from a distance. Because the people in the ANC and other people was not going to take it from him. The people within ANC made it clear that if you want to support Mr. Cummings, you will be part of a team. If you think you have a direct link and insult the other people and think that will allow you, no. No. So we don't manage Henry Costa. He has his followers and whatsoever. That's it. What happening now? Henry Costa followers now, they're going against the other people. They're talking about Darius, they don't 30,000. You know, Fagon, let me just recommend, Fagon said something the other day and which was true. You know they got politicians who are corrupt, but they do what is right. Daros Dillon will take the $30,000 and eat it. And Daros Dillon will go to the Senate and fight for what he believes in. But yet, he will eat the one that he put on the paper. So, you know, I, I will give you a pass on that. In a sense, it's a collective thing. Collective thing. They all agree that they will receive $30,000. They pass it into budget. They, they they turn corruption into legal affairs. You know it's legal. So, but Darius then will still go like you or you like you watch the the the, the dual citizenship. Setuma and other people, librarians, open your eyes. Election is coming. These are some of the things that you gotta look at and see: is this person ready? Is this person ready? But I will tell you guys, UP, don't be moved. They got big mouth. They don't scare us. You know, we have this thing where we can say, I don't want to be too graphic. They say, uh, 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 let me put it like way. They say, O Poyon. O Poyon, not afraid of O D. Woman is like a prostitute. A prostitute, not afraid of no man anymore. UP is nothing. 
they got a big mouth that 12 years what they did when they were all on the internet writing lying telling you everything the government is this the government is that we catch up with them so they will lie nobody and uh, neck do not run neck don't run political parties we all know neck do not run the political parties but neck do what regulates the party it almost like a football team you can be in liberia today and organize your football team once you do not register with lfa you are not recognized if you are registered with lfa the football teams do not run your team but the, the the fa do not run your team but they will regulate your team so if neck don't recognize you you're not participating in any election so let us be honest and smart my people let us go back again i will tell you Cummings is the best person and you still need to ask the question what will you do if you are president how will you fix the educational system in Liberia? how will you fix the security system in like this one want to hear ask a question that will take us into the 21st century not just ask a question or dumb question like we're in refugee camp when the war was on where were you who gave an f about you whether the war was on we all went through the war he himself had family in the war all the candidates have family in the war so why are you worried about the war we're talking about something that will change that will take labor from a to b eh? so we are doing everything the anc members knock on doors don't worry about what a john brown speak to you don't let nobody fool you that mr Cummings is not making a move don't let nobody fool you that nobody know mr Cummings in library that's a big big lie big big lie mr Cummings' name is a household name alexander Cummings in every county they know him he's on the news every day that is why he's in the news because they're afraid they're afraid of mr Cummings that when he's president they will stop their chopping mr Cummings' agenda will benefit the common the commoners the common liberians liberians who are struggling to make ends meet mr Cummings' educational program he broke it down we will go right back we can change it we can make it happen we're not talking about we should change, then we we'll get hope. We're talking about real change. Mr. Cummings knows exactly what our health system is supposed to be like, what our crash agriculture system to raise money to create jobs. We're not talking about giving our farmers a, 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 a fertilizer and giving them hope. We're talking about a real mega farming. We're talking about creating jobs encouraging business people to come back to liberia and that is why he his priority is his first thing we need a better electricity we have it we need a better electricity all the guys stealing current who steal power theft in Liberia? you see who's that the government officials they all getting free current eh? we're talking about electricity good drinking water we're talking about internet connectivity. We got fiber uptake in Liberia. Are we using it? No. Because we got leaders with no vision. The city is dirty. How long it will take to clean the city, my brother? Let's be honest. All things, all these things boil down to leadership. Leadership is what Liberia is lacking. And it's not that we've been we've been having a problem from all the way. We're not putting everything on the George we are, but he can't make it. Don't fool yourself, President. We are can't make it. He failed. He failed. And you see, this is not about whether you educated or not. But leadership, you must put your foot down. You must make your, your tough decisions. How can President Weir, in four years going to five years, refuse to reshuffle his government as if things is good? As if the team, if George Weah was to just take the attitude of a coach 
and put it into government, he will be the best president. Every good coach want good players or you shuffle them around. They got some players, you think that they are number five, but when you find out, they actually are a striker. They got some male feeders, you think they are a male feeder, but when you look, they do more defense, they so you got to do, drop them down in the defense. And every good coach, if they put you number nine and you can't make it, they will have to find a good player. So it is, you keep in my game, you keep in 12, you're, even the people from CDC complaining. They complaining. You got the same people around you. You in a bubble. You can't make the decision. Wasting the people time to do things that not even that will not even help Liberia. That will not even help Liberia. The president will attend every conferences. He we go on every trip. You know for why? Because of the padam. Go and check. The president built, the, the Japanese helped us to build a market. The market in Douala, $4.3 million it cost. For a, you, like, remember, your team won $1 million dollar small money. $4.3, it all is it, like, it's like a man come to your house to sleep. When the man was leaving, he left $1,000 on the table. But then he took something valuable than the thousand dollars. Then he said, "Oh yes, or you almost like you play lottery. You've been playing a lot. Uh, uh, you've been playing the machine. You play, play. You losing. You losing. You have lost over two million dollars. And on this day, you went there. You got five hundred thousand dollars. Then you jumping over the place. They gave us a market, but they stole the money. They said the market cost four point nine. It's coming up now that." They, oh, they lie to the library people. Oh, the market will cost this when you go look, they jump. Because this president need money every day. Their president must receive physical cash every day. Eh? The corruption is so, it's so clear. It's so clear. It's not even in the dark. Broad day. Broad day. I got 15 more minutes to get off the show. So my people, please, please, if you want to support your Bwaka, you can support your Bwaka. But let us do it with passion and honesty. You want to support Mr. Comis? Fine. But Liberia, if you're an independent person, even your sedition, you voted for George Weir, look at the clear picture, look at your future, ask yourself the question. Four years, last four years, and now where I am, I'm still the same. I cannot be sinking every day behind politicians. I don't need money from politicians. I need, I need or, or help things that will change our lives. We need something. We need jobs. And I want to say this to if any one of you listening, or if you know people from the intellectual centers, if the intellectual centers the CEO, the whatsoever, if they really love Liberia, if they really, really love Liberians and they love what they do because they are smart, they need to go and register themselves into a group and go into the community and teach the children, teach our young ones, teach the old ones and say, this is what you need to look for in a leader. Put your community first. Instead of setting your damn self to a, a tire shop and you want to interview or candidate and you're making nothing. You can't, you put yourself together. You're 30 persons sitting together and this man come and just talk, talk. When he leaving, he gave you $500. You're putting in your pocket and you leave. Your life is still the same. 2005 to 2018, there were guys at the CEO. They stay sitting to the same place. 2018 to now to present, they are still sitting in that same place, drinking a tire, and still asking a, 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 a candidate or a, a, a politician question why the politician life is continuing to go up. Eh? They were all over there. Jefferson Koji to got money. They stay sitting there talking about who say, who say, not changing their lives around. Then you want a good country. 
you want a good country, you got all that brains, you graduate from Universal Library, but you take your time to sit in a damn so-called intellectual center that you're not even making no move for the country. You only want politicians to come. You're not campaigning. You're not going around. Yeah? Be a part of something for God's sake. Now, you guys, I don't know why people worry about the intellectual centers. Yeah? I met another group called intellectual thinkers. Thinkers on what? The other one, economic freedom fighter. We'd love to photocopy because they have the economic freedom fighter in South Africa. See what they're doing. They are progressing. And we got the economic freedom fighters in Liberia. They started good. Oh, yes, the guys went against the government. Bloop. You can hear about them again? No, you can't even hear about them. You can't even hear nothing. They pay them already. They're part of the economic freedom fighter now. So they are on the side of the government instead of fighting for the people now. You see how it's hard for poor men to get into something? Then you think Alexander comes now. The men who spending more money to campaign, to move around, help organizations, helping schools, helping hospitals, taking his foundation is so strong, going around the best foundation so far in the country that you can compare with any international foundation, going to hospital, giving medication, helping schools and this and that, that do not even, he's not a typical politician. We should be happy, we should be proud of a Liberian who went out there, work hard, and still said, no, my country is my country. He moved home. He's not one of the guys then who came to run for president and then after the election, abandoned you. He's the only guy who left, went in the country, went back home, and said, listen, I can help my country. If, look, I will tell you today, and I will be honest to you, if the government of Liberia was good, Alexander, Alexander Cummings was never going to get into politics. When I say this for you, it was not something because of his, of the, the way he, when he sat down and said, no, 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 no. I think this people doing the wrong thing. I must help. You want him to sit back, enjoy himself, and see things going, it will still affect him. That's why I encourage some Liberians, some people to get into politics. Some people get into politics for so many reasons. But most of our poor people who get into politics is because of themselves. You listen to Harry Custer. When the person says, yeah, we get interest. Politics is interest. But when running from running for public office, it's not about your interest. It's about the people. Then your interest is last. It's about the people, not about you. But when you say politics is interest, and then you're pretending to say you're talking for the people, when you get in there, then you bring your interest out. Politics is interest in a sense. When you hear the person say politics is interest, that means I'm in this community. We want a better school in our community. We want a better clinic. We want everything. Politics is interest. It's not a personal interest. You can keep your personal... If you if politics is interest, you do not get into politics. Let me make it honest and say some of you, some of you guys, your brains, you all went to school for nothing. When you hear the businessman saying politics is interest, you don't see him campaigning. What he will do, he will support you financially and sit back because he's looking at you that when you're president tomorrow, he needs certain things to be done. Maybe the judicial system is bad. That's why he's getting into it. Maybe he wants some contracts. Maybe he wants this. But you cannot be running for office. Then you're talking about politics is interest. I'm all here and say, hey, Mr. Cummings, and anything I put it at interest. Or, uh, yes, I will be proud. I will be proud if they call me to help. I would not refuse it. But when I put my interest first and say, Mr. Cummings, uh, when you win, you came into free portal. What is nonsense is that? Eh? Believe in the ideology first. Believe in the process. Believe that this man will make the difference. Don't be look at a man because when he win, I will eat. No. Believe in a price that he will make the difference. I will see a better school. I will see a better judicial system. I will see a better health care. I will see a better infrastructure. I will see job creating. Eh? But not to, for your interest. Liberian men, with our own, everything we do is backward. When they say politics is interest, oh, they make it bad. And look, Running for public office is not for you to get rich. People who run for public office is not about them getting rich like that. 
Yes, it gave you fame. It gave you whatsoever. People get to know you. Yes, you will get paid. You will work less. But they want you to deliver. They want you to help them. That's why they say we will vote for you. We, they want you to be their messenger. They want you to serve them. The Bible tells you leaders serve. You are serving. You are not just ruling. You are serving and you must lead them. Leader open doors. Leaders are the last people to eat. That's what they'll tell you say, on a ship. When the ship getting ready to capture, the captain is the last man to leave the ship. When the captain leaves the ship, when he comes out and most of the people die, they will prosecute him. They charge him. That means he, he neglected his people. You see? So Liberians, open your eyes. This is not no rocket scientist. Open your eyes. You got all the candidates. You know who all running for president say Mr. Cummings desperate? Eh? Listen, it's so simple. Look at these people. Mr. Cummings finger document. Mr. Cummings did this. Mr. Cummings never stole money from Liberian government one day. If Mr. Cummings finger the document to keep them in, in that one group, kudos. If Mr. Cummings finger the document to keep them together, to make them stronger, congratulations, Mr. Cummings. If that's the case. So, Mr. Cummings finger in document, what there to, what there to benefit Mr. Cummings? You got no more than Mr. Cummings. You got more fame. People know you. If Mr. Cummings finger the document so we can go, why can't you go to primary? Why you couldn't why you couldn't do the the, 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 the VPS? Why you couldn't do the, the consensus building? Mr. Cummings finger the document, but you afraid to go to convince to go to primary with Mr. Cummings. So what there to benefit Mr. Cummings? And let me say this: even Mr. Cummings finger the document. And you go to the primary, and Mr. Cummings win the primary, and the, the people say they want to support you, you will not force them. Okay? So if Mr. Cummings actually, if, if Mr. Cummings was the one who put the exit clause into that document, congratulations, Mr. Cummings, you did a very good job. The CPP document is the best document ever put together by Liberia. And any organization, any collaboration, if you ever want to be in a collaboration, that is the type of document to put together that you will never leave. You will leave after a certain time. That is the document. So if Mr. Cummings actually was the one who put it in there, that means Mr. Cummings, you're smarter than every one of them. That means you should learn to respect what you put on paper. Learn to respect what you put on paper. CPP was not organized because of Mr. Buaka. CPP was not organized because of failed UP that was already done. They should be thankful to the CPP for keeping them alive. They should be thankful. Today they're running all over the place to show that they were dead. They couldn't even pay their rent. They couldn't even keep the little place they were staying. They couldn't keep it. To show that they were dead. They even get one, one lay bicycle to show this is a unity party property. They don't even have it. Poor Ami Modad, but Joseph Waka nephew now, he got to use his lay business inflow, a lay business money now to, to, to run UP. At the same time, Mr. Waka is confused. He don't know who to turn to. He turned to little girl Uri, uh, 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 and Taylor Yuri. Then he got a uh, Mr. Costa parading the street with him. Mr. Kostov already videotaping too and got everything on him. And now Mr. Mr. U, Mr. Buaka is parading the street with a man who now they say take, participating in a, in a porn movie because he got another picture out there with a little girl. Then plus himself. And they say that particular picture, that video too. The, the one that they just screenshot that video. You know, I listen to people, the other guys say, that's not Costa. That's not Costa. That's not Costa. Then she said, "Where well, maybe the man, the man was sitting in a hotel room and somebody opened the door and took a picture. Oh, but then, I thought you just said another thing. Yeah. Supposedly the man attended the pastor. And do, but you see, the evil that man does live after them. What goes around comes around. When you go in the bush to pick medication, to pick your medicine, when you bend down, the next one behind you, that somebody owns. When you do it to other people, they will do it to you. 
So today, your UP people, where you at? Where is George Lobo? Mr. Boyka kicking through the curb. Where is all the other guys? Yesterday, I listened to the D flow and, and, and I D flow and, and, and Patrick and, and Francis Doe. Francis Doe were on Henry Costa. Every one of them, they see UP people and say, Oh, fire in the camp. Let me tell you, George, we are speaking to Henry Costa. Ain't got nothing on us. Ain't got nothing on ANC. Ain't got nothing on Mr. Cummings. Yeah. It's just between you're the UP and the CDC. And it has more effect on even CDC. Because George, we have just proven to you, he don't give a damn about you part from CDC. You're who killing yourself. We're not trying to bring no confusion in your camp. But understand life. Understand situation. Henry Costa is fighting for himself. Henry Costa is fighting his own battle. He wants to go home. And you know, I love Eugene Fagon. He know how to put it. You have a conversation. That, hey, the president can talk to anybody. If the president calls you, you're not refusing. Me, right now, he I'm not refusing. But I can tell anybody that if President we are and myself to ever talk, the only thing I want for President to do me, he will come on the live and let us have a conversation. Let the librarian people see it. You're listening. The first time I met Mr. Cummings one-on-one, -on -one, I had a life with him. It's proven. The first time I stood in front of Cummings for us to talk, to say this, and I told him, I said, I need, to have a I need to have a show with you. Do you want us to have a conversation, go live? He said, yes. If I have a conversation with Mr. George Manning Weir, I will say, but Chief, Mr. President, let us talk. And it will look good. I will try to convince him to get on live and let us have that normal conversation. Let people see it, how they will feel. But other you get talk show, blah, 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 blah. you're going to the library, you're sitting there for four hours, other person 20 minutes. They took him and cost the brain on spoon to ask for 20 minutes. But when I say, oh, let me ask you two, what you talk to President We are, oh, no, we can't do it. <laughs> let me ask you what you're President We are discuss. They can't do it. They can't do it. I asked Mr. Stanton P. Body, uh, Mr. Stanton Waterspoon. I'm sorry, Mr. Stanton Waterspoon. He's my friend. Nothing personal. I want to ask you some question. It got nothing to do with personal matter, but I want, he said no. But why you want you myself to have a conversation? I know you got the biggest platform. I agree. But I want you and myself to ask. I will ask you a question concerning Spoon. I will ask you a question in the, about politics. But he said no. But the guy, they brought Heron Costa on their show for Heron Costa to explain the 20-minute conversation with he and President Weir. But they refused to tell us the four hours, 35 minutes with they and President Weir. You see? You get it? You get it? And after President Weir spoke with Henry Costa, he called Timo Lee and said, oh, I just spoke to Costa. So imagine that. It was not even Timo Lee and Louis called. He called other people and said, I just spoke to that picking. I just talked to that picking. That picking. And George, you are not going to give him invitation. And if you want invitation from George Mann and Weir, if the president of Liberia say you are invited, why are the invitations to come from the Justice Ministry? So that means maybe you cause problems somewhere. I don't know. You see, so guys, I will call Henry Custer's name because Henry Custer is a politician. I don't look at Henry Custer as an advocate. He's a politician. He made it clear that he's contesting. So once you're a politician and you're in public space, we have the right to scrutinize you. And when he decides to get into it properly, again, he will be scrutinized more and more. And don't be surprised. Eight years from now, Liberians will be voting on character, on moral attitude. So all these things that are going around about picture, you're who's supporting it. You, you know, let me tell you something. I'm saying it today, and I will be clear to everybody. You won't put my picture there, put my picture. And you said that dog, they can dog picture. Put my picture and let me be doing something. Put my picture there. Put it there. If you get real picture of me, you put it there. Please don't back. Nobody will back me up. Let me talk for myself. Let me deal with my wife and let me deal with myself and my family. And you, what I want the support is to tell the truth to me. We're saying these things so other men will be very careful. 
That is why people talk about things. You need to stop it. That's why I said don't fall in love with politicians. If anybody in the comments group that ever go out there and show your private parts and show all kinds of, trust me, you will never be around Mr. Comments again. I can promise you that. Mr. Comments will tell you plain blank, my brother, I can, you can still support me, but you should support me from the distance. From a distance, the world looks so bright. You know, that place you will stand from. Mr. Comments will not allow a moral act. Spoon went to Liberia. They had a two-hour, 45 minutes with Mr. Comments. Asking question. Even Kev Hassan asked Mr. Comments about gay. But they said that one of the best questions Mr. Comments gave him because I won on one. Mr. Comments answered the question. He just take a tea and put it in a bottle. They easy. He got so quiet. That nonsense going around. Mr. Comments that... The, the, the man who on dialysis, who the girl gave him part of her, her, her body, that he and all say he lying on Mr. Cummings that gay. But the answer that Mr. Cummings gave Kev Hassan, you're asking, they ever play the tape for you? I'm not saying, look, if President Weir and myself ever call, apart from President Weir telling me happy birthday by text, it was what, two years ago? Two years ago. But if I have that opportunity to say, President, we are talk to me, I will tell President, we are simple thing. I said, oh, it's good. thank you, sir. And I appreciate the call. But can we have a conversation? Like I will bring you also. Let, I will try to convince him. I will try to convince him. Oh, you're jealous because we are in call. You. No, that UP people verse. That UP verse. So, Jen, how you see. They broke the CPP. They try to break it apart, although the name is standing and the foundation is there. That the same way he telling President we are now say, don't worry, I will deliver Mr. Boaka to you to eat him for breakfast. <laughs> Pedro said, I can imagine because you know the oh Fagon, Fagon are so smart guy. Fagon say, they're not all the conversation there. The one that he told you about his equipment and whatsoever, that's not it. But all the guy did was, he said, I will deliver Mr. Boaka. I will deliver Mr. Boaka to, to you, that you will eat him for, din for breakfast, dinner, uh, and lunch, and dinner. You know what I'm saying? So you see, that the UP people worry about it. That meal, ANC worry. ANC, the CPP is still strong. We don't need UP. To be in the middle. Guys, I want you to understand this thing today. UP, there are people in UP that already stay supporting the CPP. There are people in UP who say, well, you can do all that thing. We're not going nowhere. But the only thing, you're, you're the one in leadership. These people will not go. They will CPP. ANC and, 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 and Liberty Party is enough. If any other people want to join, it's free. They can come now and join. All the hala 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 is gone. No more noise. UP was the problem, not ALP. ALP was nothing. ALP just struggling for themselves. You can tell. ALP was, AL, ALP was only fighting for their, their, their political leader survival. Today, what happened? Taylor Yuri. We'll soon get a job. You got a, 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 a because Taylor you and they're trying to do to, to finish the, 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 the job to accomplish the full thing to take Mr. Boaka and turn Mr. Boaka over to the lion. Now, Mr. Yure's daughter, she got a contract at the airport. The other guy, she get her TV stay, her, her TV or frequency. That other people fighting to get frequency. Tell one call, she got it. You see there? So, Mr. Yuri, just waiting now to get a late cut. Mr. Costa finally was able to talk to George. We had to confirm it that, yes, the job is completed. I need something. I need this. I need that. Magee had to force, I think, beg President Weir to make that call. 
I can challenge anybody. You know how I know? The first thing Maggie knows very well that George we are don't talk to her custom. How Maggie will call you and say, Oh, when the last time you talked to your friend, he kept on his show, he tried to keep it, he kept the comfort, he kept the, the secret. He said, Oh, I will not tell you who I spoke to. But when he went on spoon, when the pressure and everything was on him, poop, he put a foot in his mouth. He said, Oh, I will talk, I talk to Maggie. Then he put his foot in his mouth. He won't bring the he won't change the story. He won't change the whole story from a porn movie to a reality movie. He won't change the story about his picture that is flooding all over the internet. I'm not the one who put it there. So don't even get mad about it. I'm not the one who put the picture there. So it's not strange to me because he got a lot of pictures on the internet. He got the one that he, he, he performing sexual and stuff on the internet. I'm not the one who put it there. So you guys, y'all be sitting there and say, and Photoshop and Photoshop. Do my own of Photoshop and put it there. Do my own of Photoshop. And do my Photoshop. You, 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 you do my Photoshop and, and put whatever you want to put there. I will enjoy it. Sir. You understand? Know you guys are Liberians. We, we are our own problems. You remember when, when that picture came up about Mr. Comis? It was Cape Man, so I'm putting that Maryland. It was Cape Man. When the people in Cape Man pick up Mr. Cummings to cross the river with him. I was one of those who condemned that picture. And then you know what I was proud of Mr. Cummings for? Mr. Cummings came on. He had an interview with, 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 with Zion. When they asked him, you know Mr. Cummings said? If I will go back, I will refuse it. By then... They were crossing the river. They pick him up, put it in, and, and, and walk with him to cross the river. They feel that there was an appreciation to hold it to. But he he said, listen, when I saw the picture myself, it took me back and said, wow. He was strong enough to say it will never happen again. Because I condemned it myself. It brought some memories back. We're not Congo people. We're not native people. We are Liberians. And some other people try to play. Now they don't say Congo. They say elite. Because they won't use the Congo war. They won't use it. Special people. That the same divisiveness. In Liberia, when you go help you, you claim. They say you Congo man. You remember the elite. Or struggling child. Whether his family were middle class and whatsoever. In Liberia, those days, we have middle class. We have middle class. We had the battle and whatsoever. But people could survive. People could feed their kids. People could send their children to school. People, oh my, in the market selling pepper, who sent her child to CWA, cathedral. Yeah. But today, people are struggling to send their children to school. The children have turned to be the parents. The children, they are the man and pa in the house. They go out, they go out with, with older men. And they older men brave enough to even go to the parent house. Because they're vulnerable, 200, 300. Stealing money, what do you expect? What do you expect? Then you say we got a good government. When the government can protect its people, they rape the children, they kill them. The government can protect its citizens, can even protect business people, can protect people money for the first time. International community calling us out. Stop using the people money. You stealing, fight corruption. Yes, you put things in place. The IMF helping you. Yes, you don't take money from, but you know where to take money from. You got gasoline price already expensive, but you keeping a taxi driver in the street for three, four hours. You got traffic jam for two hours and this man buy gas for five dollars or plus. But the man in the traffic for four hours because you want not ask him for a document and you asking the same person over and over and over for document. Why are you keeping the cars in the street when they're not even a, a road walking? Why? 
Look what happened. The people that die in our ship care, uh, 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 stuff. What came from Allah? Zero case. Zero. What did they do to the family? Nothing. They got anything wrong? No. Nothing they got from out of it. Nothing. They die for nothing. If the other renowned place where the insurance and water by this time are family rich, but in Liberia is for nothing. Government are supposed to protect its citizens. They don't care. They all about the money. They bring rotting car. They bring this other one. They bring that one. They allow it because no law and order. What you expect the common man who's going to be inspecting? He's not getting paid. So he take whatsoever and just continue. Then you say we're running a government. That is why all of them are afraid of Mr. Cummings. That is why they are afraid of Mr. Cummings because they know it will be a tsunami in Liberia if Cummings is president. It will be a tsunami. So guys, if you're a friend of Cummings, supporter of Cummings from the ANC, if you're Liberian, see reason. We need good leaders. Look at the Senate. Look at the representatives. But we need good president. We, we need president who will not be afraid to tell us the truth. We need president who will not be afraid to fire you when you steal. We need president that will put Liberia first. We need president with integrity. President who will stand up. Set the example on himself to show you. They say when Christmas will be good, you will tell from the eve. Mr. Cummings, God bless him, but see how he living. He don't show off. He don't brag. Mr. Cummings can purchase any cars he want to put. He driving the best car in the world. The number one car that is Mercedes Benz. The same car, one former president had Charles Taylor. He drives these cars. He, he loves cars, but you don't see him showing off. He living in a house that he don't need to build a house again if he's president. He don't need to purchase anything for himself when he's president. He don't need to give his children job when he's president because they themselves settle. Eh? You don't see his children running around to put it. He said, my family, will, my children will not work. I'm not talking about fire causing whatsoever. Eh? Nepotism as a whole, we just misinterpret nepotism. When we talk about nepotism, sometimes the closer family like us, son, daughter, yes, or well, not nephew, because even your friend, you consider that as nepotism too, because as, as, as I pointed, because I know you. You see, this man is saying that my wife, if she's the first lady of Liberia, we will not put a budget money in the budget for her. You got not to, if she want to carry on project, we'll raise the money. He said, my salary. He's spending more than what his salary worth anyway. He said, my salary, I will send it to the Anti-Corruption Commission because this man believed that when we can minimize corruption, like bro, be good. And all over around the world, corruption deprives the citizen of what they're supposed to get. Corruption deprives you of good education. Corruption deprives you of good health. Corruption deprives you of uh, infrastructure development. It deprives you. And always, when you continue to steal, you still don't succeed. Just a temporary thing. At the end of the day, everything you, you do will go right back to the, to, to, to the ground. Look at our past presidents. Look at our past officials. They work for things that they know. They, they, they store money. They don't never work for it. Eh? A man who work hard for his money, it's not easy to go broke easily. It's not an easy thing to go broke. It will be the first time in our history we got a man who his career of financial officer to tell you how you make money. The first time in our life, the first man to be president, you will be the first man or millionaire to be president of Liberia. And I will tell you, if Mr. Pres if Mr. Cummings is president of Liberia, for anybody to run for president, you will think twice. You would think twice because the system that he will put together, that when you want to run for president, you will ask yourself, can I maintain it? Liberians, put your foot down. Put your foot down. 
enough is enough. These guys have fooled us a lot. We shouldn't allow politicians to make fun out of us. You need to do your own research. You need to read. You need to check. Look at the Constitution. You know your rights. The only right that they gave you in the Constitution that gave you the power is to vote. And is to vote right. Because how you vote is what you will get. If you plant orange, you will get orange. Don't blame yourself. You voted for George Weir. You saw something in George Weir. George Weir is not 100% bad. George Weir is not 100% messed up in leadership. But the only thing is that George Weir got more failed marks in leadership than the one that passed. Seriously. They say even in relationship, you look at what is good. That's what they tell you. Say just, just be 50%. George, nobody can tell me if you bring, even if you bring a foreign person to rate the George Weir government, George Weir is not even in the 40 in, in the 30%. He's not even in the 30%. If we if Liberia is a good place where you have a good polling system, George Weir is not even in it. You will only give George Weir, you will give him high marks. Maybe he around 60 in a develop in a in a rural rehabilitation. Because let me get it straight. You don't build no rules. Nobody build rules in Liberia yet. Because the rules are already there, you just need to fix it. But when it comes to security, it comes to the economic part, it comes to job creation, it comes to the Joshua is far down. Things that are supposed to change him on life is worse. And do you know why they're concentrating on roads? You don't even know. Because that is where you get the money. They gave the contract to the Lebanese guy, the Lebanese guy turned around, gave them the percentage. Honor Ellen Johnson were paying 1.1. Honor Joshua is 1.6 per mile. Ask yourself the question. Ask yourself the question. So that's where they get the money from. Why would sit there or health minister build a new hospital for herself? Yeah. Then we should shut up. You got a deputy minister for debt management who's supposed to pay government debt. His business, he opened a business and doing business with government. That means the president where? So that means the president got other businesses that are operating to, to government. My people, if you want for your life to change, if you want us to see a better country that you will go to to retire, then it's up to you to make the decision. And it's clear. We either keep President Weir or we move forward. Mr. Boakow cannot deliver again. The mind is willing, but the body is weak. President Weir, President and VP Boakow, cannot deliver Liberia. According to his record, he cannot. He's not a leader. VP Boakow is not a leader. He would never, he can, he have never making it, he had never made a tough decision in his life. For the years he worked in government, it has proven. He refused, he never make a tough call to even challenge Ellie as a VP behind closed door. He never did it. He kept everything in his heart against Ellie. Let somebody tell us when Bwaka challenged Ellie when he was VP. Bwaka never challenged Ellie. Never, ever <coughs> challenged Madame Selif. Bwaka never made a tough call. Bwaka abandoned CPP in four months, in less than four months, and walk out. Then that Liberia we should give you. Then we should give you Liberia. Bwaka could not even stand with Brani Samoka. He abandoned Brani Samoka. The candidate that he put up, he abandoned him. Can you say he's leader? And guess what he did again? He abandoned UP presently. And went for different person, brought another person to head his team, Taylor Yuri, and left the UP people who all over the place crying. But it's on y'all. It's on y'all. 
Child who can hear will feel. The man has said, the child has said, the man will not sleep. They said will not sleep. We're moving. Mr. Baka has put a split in the UP. ANC, we stay together. We're holding together. We're on our boat together. With the friends of Cummings and whosoever, we're on our boat together. We need a changed country. And we will get the changed country. We will get a better Liberia. For you and myself and our children and children, children, children. We we'll get a country. If some of us do not reach the promised land and we don't see it, and we maybe we we'll see it from a distance, so be it. Maybe we will not be alive at the time because tomorrow is not promising to no one. So always think that today is your last day. If some of us don't see it, my children, 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 relatives, whosoever will see it. So you go ahead and think that politics is interest is about you. When you make it about you, trust me, you'll be disappointed. If you make it about you, you'll be disappointed. Mr. Commissioner, a politician, he said, every day if I don't win, I live for it. Life continues. He's, if Mr. Cummings was a typical politician by this time, trust me, you would never hear about Boaka again. Because typical politicians, they can do anything. They can bribe like hell. They can go the extra mile. Mr. Cummings, finger the dog, Mr. Cummings, you damn smart. If Mr. Cummings is the one who put all that thing in that document, Mr. Cummings, you're too smart. Because Liberians do not believe in what they put on paper. To show that Liberians do not even read. Mr. Cummings, you are the smartest man ever got into politics. And we will learn from it. If I decide to sign a contract with anybody, I will take part of the CPP document and put it in there. That is the best thing. Oh, we need a strong CPP. We need to hold together. How can you hold Liberian men together when they're quick to run away? How can you hold Liberians together when they're quick to betray you? But that document held us together. That's the best document ever put together by any political group. And we will live, we will talk about it again in the future. And I get a copy of that CPP document. I will use that document to put a group together too. And I will just take up the name CPP. I will take up the CPP. I will take up the UP, the ALP, and see, and just put the guys who want to sign a contract. That's all. I will keep it just like that. That one of the Best document ever put together in any political setting. Because Liberians believed that they were going to leave. And some of them thought that Mr. Cummings was going to leave. They thought Mr. Cummings was the one who was going to abandon the party, abandon them and say, well, say I can't win, I'm going. Now fear grabbed them. they desperate for him, but fear grabbed them. Call it the entitlement syndrome. That cannot be killed. That's my I entitled to it. UP was already dead. UP was nothing after the election. Nothing. Don't let them lie to you. Don't let them scare you. They get a big muff. They get a big muff. UP will not even count. You just watch it. Nobody says you people can second. You people can first. You people can second. Yeah, we wear down, we can't 36. Don't worry about us. Don't worry. We the one supposed to be worrying. We the one supposed to worry about our position. The race is not to the swift, but the one who endures to the end. How long? 2023 not going. We the one going there. We the one going there. 2023 election waiting. It just to the same place. 20 gone four years. When you bop your eye, we're there next year. We already gone three months into this year. So continue talking. The other option lies. You see what they do now? They're trying to bring back the same argument. Don't waste your time on the argument. Don't waste your time on the damn document they're talking about. The document is at neck and that's it. And don't be afraid about the damn court case. 
The court case will not stop Mr. Cummings from running. The court case will not stop Alexander Cummings from getting on the ballot. They can delay, they delay, they delay. We will walk out. We will walk out of that case. And if they don't be careful, a lot of them will be disgraced. A young man like Mo Ali coming back to bring a new discovery that he, Mo Ali, went around with five copies. Your thing will trim water travel knows. Who the hell will want to notarize five copies? Y'all will ever notarize things. Can they notarize of five copies for you to listen? This is how it works. <laughs> what goes to neck is the original. You and myself, we in a different group. We in one group now, one on brother. That how dumb they are. CPP, the UP, the ALP, they were all under the same constitution they wanted to put together. So, technically, it should be one document into the CPP office that they can look at any time. Every party just decide to get copies. But according to the document, when you sign the document, you abide by the CPP rules. It was not a contract that we signed that you can go, 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 no. So why would you want to notarize five copies? Why would you want to notarize five copies when CPP had an office already? No, maybe some of you ain't getting it. You ain't getting it. If you and myself sign a contract, they got different, different type of contract. If we sign a contract to do certain things, but it got nothing to do with us, but we all do our things separately, it's a different thing. But the CPP document states that once you sign this document, you abide by the CPP rules. Although you still, your party is still there, but your party will not be in this group again. So we that are in this group, we together. No, you don't understand it yet. Let me put it this way. CPP now, the four parties, they are not, there is not a merger, but under the CPP, they are one. That is why they got one name representing them, collaborating political parties. Then our four parties put together, they went to neck and registered their name. So the CPP document, the framework, the bylaws control the four party. So CPP had an office. The document is sent to NEC. They keep one copy. Just for respect's sake, everybody get copy. But you stay, NEC don't recognize you. NEC recognize CPP. Why would you want to notarize five copies? You all sign. You get copy. The notarized copy go to NEC. They go to NEC because NEC want original copies. Nobody carry photocopy to neck. We're not stupid. I'm saying it because I did it before. I went to register my brother. We carry the photocopy first. We thought we were going to keep it. They said, no, 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 no. They sent it right back to us. We had to go back and redo it. So like brother, let them fool you. Unless maybe you never went to neck before. Then somebody said, say, what about the deal? No, land deal is different from that. Because I only stupid keep as I will say that. What about the deal? Then when you go buy your land, they can give you the original. Look at that nonsense. Look at that nonsense. Eh? And they want you to believe it too. If you go to NEC and say, give me a copy of that document, NEC will give you photocopy. They will take a photo a copy, or they will just print it and photocopy and, and, and give you a copy. What do you think they're going to give you? They will take the original and give it to you. When the original is out of neck hand, that means no value, it's not valid anymore. So UP, if you really want to be on your own, you better come back and say, let us, you know, there's a question, if you all go back again, ask the question, comes the question. To show these people are not leaders, none of them was brave enough to look in Cummings' face and say, you know what, let's cancel the whole thing. None of them did it. They never stood in front of Cummings to say, let's break the CPP apart. All they did when they leave the meeting, then they send it to their so-called popular man. 
Then they come out and lie. Now the lies catch up with them. If you're going to break it up, you tell Kumi, say, listen, man, it can't work. Kumi's are going to say, okay, let's break it up. But who day you're going beyond choo 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 choo? Call the man stranger, call him names. They will allow you for librarian to listen to you. Librarian, when I listen to them, they are a bunch of criminals. The CDC government, they are done. Judge Wacker win election. Because some of, if you hear anybody say, well, the opposition disappoint us, so I think we are will win. Then you yourself, you got a serious problem. The opposition don't make appointment in government. The oppositions do not run the government. Opposition are not on salaries. Opposition don't collect taxes. Opposition, you don't see opposition paving road or breaking ground. So what one day are you discouraged because the opposition ain't work? What there to discourage you that the car you were in, the car broke down. So that means that man will run away. You not to get on another car and go there. You don't know it. So what the opposition did that discourage you because they're fighting among themselves to put to, to come up with one conclusion that they want to discourage you? You are saying you got a problem. You yourself, you got a serious problem. I can understand. It's surprising me. So, guys, I love you guys. I got to go to work. Y'all have a good day. I just decided to come up, and I will come up this evening again. And by the grace of God, we'll get it right. Y'all have a good day. God bless you. Drive safely. The life you save may be your own or someone else you love. So, guys, never forget, every day is special to us. The time we take to speak, I said, don't waste your time. You can say whatever you want to say, but let us speak the truth for Liberia. You might not agree with me, but the fact is that I have tried my best to say what I have to say. And you too, do the same thing. I love you all. God bless you all. That's all I can do. The rest is yours. You got to cast that foot. You got to do that running. You got to do everything. Mr. Cummings, just a one man to one vote. When you put all the votes together, teamwork. So you have a good day and God bless you. I love you all. Bye for now. Pray that God protect us today. Bye. Let me play Mr. Cummings stuff and then I'm done. So I'm out there. See, bye. You take care. The oldest republic in Africa. And yet, we're one of the least developed countries on the continent, and indeed, one of the least developed countries in the world. And I say to you, my fellow Liberians, we deserve a better Liberia. We need to ask ourselves some fundamental questions. Why are we where we are? Most Liberian homes don't have electricity. Most Liberian homes don't have running water. Most Liberians are unemployed. These are things we can change. These are things we should demand of ourselves and of our leaders. We, as Liberians, cannot keep doing the same things and expect different results. We cannot keep electing and selecting the same kinds of leaders with the same kinds of experiences and expect Liberia to change. We have to do many things differently and that starts with selecting and electing new leaders who know how to create jobs, who know how to grow the economy, who will prioritize the Liberian people first before they prioritize themselves. 
And this is what I offer you, the Liberian people. The other universal truth that I want to share with you, my fellow Liberians, is the best predictor of future performance and future behavior is past performance and past behavior. And again, I ask you to look at my record of job creation, of success, of managing large budgets without one penny going missing. All of these things you can look at and compare to the other candidates. And again, you will see that my past performance and past behavior is a good predictor, a good indicator that what I commit to, we will deliver. There are five priorities we have, and we call that the what. And then there are five things we call the how we'll do it. And those priorities are as follows. Our first priority is infrastructure. Simply put, is electricity, it's roads, it's water, and it's internet and cell phone connectivity across Liberia. We have to, have to invest in infrastructure. That is the top priority. That's the basis on which we can and will do everything else. The second priority for us is job creation. There are too many unemployed, underemployed, and unemployable Liberians. The unemployment rate is over 85%. And therefore, job creation is our next priority, creating jobs for the Liberian people. Our next priority is agriculture. We are a country that do not fear ourselves. These are things we can do for ourselves. We should be producing rice to feed ourselves. And my commitment is that by the end of my first term in office, we will be self-sufficient in rice production. And within education, we are focused on vocational training, teachers training, and adult education. But we have to educate our young people because again, that's how we can help them create jobs. That's how we can train farmers. And so these things are all linked together. And our final priority in terms of the what is health. Because you can have good infrastructure, you can have a good job, you can feed yourself, you can have great education, but if you don't have your health, it doesn't matter. And so health is our fifth priority, and there we're focused on primary health care and preventive health care. So those are the what's we'll do for our people, for the Liberian people. How are we going to do these things? The first how is we want to engage Liberians differently in the transformation of our country. We call this hearts and minds. How do we get all librarians to participate in the changes that are required? We're gonna use arts and music and culture and reconciliation and religion. All of these things, we will be deliberate in using these things to engage us as a people in this transformation process. And so we're doing some work on how we can make those things happen. The next how is that we're gonna find the money. We have to find the resources, the money to do all of the what's I mentioned earlier. And the way we'll find the money is first, we'll go after waste in government. You know, we spend a lot of money on things that we don't need or we pay too much for things that we do need. So for example, I believe the vehicles we buy for our government officials, we spend too much money on that. We should reduce the number of vehicles and we should buy less expensive vehicles for our government officials. We need to reduce how much they make so we can pay teachers and civil servants and police officers and the military officers and healthcare workers, people who actually do the work. We need to pay them more money and reduce the gap between those at the top and those who actually do the work. The other way we'll find the money is going after this thing called corruption. You know, corruption has been the bane of our country. It's, is the, the primary reason why we are as underdeveloped as we are today. And we will aggressively go after corruption. The first thing we'll do is, we will appoint a corruption czar, a minister in charge of corruption in the presidency that will coordinate all of the 
agencies that are meant to uh, find corrupt officials. Secondly thing we'll do is we'll make sure we are giving the resources, the money, the right people, the right logistics to the anti-corruption agencies, the LACC, Liberia Anti-Corruption Commission, the General Accounting uh, Office, the Public Procurement and Concessions uh, Commission. We will make sure they got the right resources to go after corrupt uh, officials. After that, when we find people who are corrupt, we will prosecute them, we will put them in jail, and we'll seize the assets. It will not be good enough for you just to resign. Okay. So those are the things we will do to really go after uh, corruption. I have committed that I will not take a salary. The salary that is paid the president, I will allocate it towards helping to fight uh, corruption. That's how important I think it is to, to us. And then the other way we'll find the money is we'll make sure we're getting full value, the full money we, monies we're due from our natural resources. We'll look to exploit other natural resources so we can get the funds required to fund health care, to fund infrastructure, to create jobs, etc., etc. So finding the money is the second how. The next how is we want to create a government of inclusion. We want all sections of our country to be represented in the government. We want opposition political parties to be in government. Because I believe, we believe that having a government inclusion will help all of us make the right decisions. It will make sure that we're spreading the resources of our country across the entire country. And then the last two hows, one is growing the private sector. We will focus on growing the private sector so librarians can primarily benefit from that growth. No longer should librarian business people be spectators to our economy. And we want to actively support librarianization and encourage and provide credit and other facilities to librarian businesses so they can participate. And last but not least, we will use technology. We'll leverage technology to help us achieve our goals. So those are the what's in the house. But let me end by leaving you again with these two universal truths. One is we cannot keep doing the same things, my people, and expect different results. We cannot keep electing the same people with the same experiences and expect Liberia to change. We need to elect and select different people to lead us, to serve us, to help us manage and run our country. And the other universal truth is the best predictor of future performance and future behavior is past performance and past behavior. And on those two counts, I believe I stand head and shoulders above the other candidates expiring. Together, we will change Liberia for the benefit of all Liberians. We will transform our country. We will give us a new start, a fresh start, so that all of us can benefit from this country we love. I thank you. God bless you. God bless the Republic of Liberia.
<laughs> I'm sorry, it looked like there was no sound. And <laughs> I said I was going, I'm, I'm, I'm mistaken. To me. But what I was trying to say here is that I know somebody, I know, I showed somebody to me tell me there was no sound. Yeah. And so Joseph Conto, and I blame the UP because ALP started the problem, but UP fall for it. They're supposed to be the guy in the groom of the wisdom, and they fall for it. I know, but ALP was the one who started the problem. Yeah. And for the Nimba radio station, I was not on it yesterday. I waited for the information. Apparently, high internet problem because you know it got to be done through WhatsApp. And I will be on the comments night. It will be on Friday. So anyway, I talk to you. You have a good day. God bless you. Drive safely. And kudos to Mr. Comments. Bye.